Good morning. As you come in, go ahead and share this. This live show, how to walk in the spirit. We talked Wednesday concerning walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh and what that looks like to walk in the spirit. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining. As you come in, go ahead and share this to your timeline, to your networks, to your friends and invite somebody on. So if you haven't yet watched the live stream, live stream, from Wednesday, I want to invite you to go watch Wednesday so that you can understand where we are today. Thank you for joining me. For those that join every Wednesday and Friday morning, thank you for joining. I appreciate you guys. I'm a few minutes late. We're normally on here at 715, but I'm a few minutes behind. Um, but thank you for joining and thank you for sharing. For those of you that are interested, I do coach and mentor and one-on-one um, -on -one coaching and group coaching. And I also have written books. So you can go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com and find all of those resources to empower you while you're in route. What are you in route to? Fulfilling your destiny, being a Christ follower who matures in God to actualize the plan of God and the will of God that you may walk in the fullness of your sonship, the fullness of your inheritance in God to live this life and actually do the things that God has prepared for you to do before time began. Each one of us have a destiny that is hidden in Christ Jesus and God wants each and every Christ follower to find out what is the will of God concerning you, what is in the heart of God, what is in the mind of God, what is in the plans of God concerning your life. We uh, journeyed on Wednesday from walking in the spirit, seeing the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives to the degree that now we are cooperating with the spirit of God to manifest as sons and daughters in the earth, being a sibling of Jesus Christ, who was the firstborn among many brethren. And so our lives should mirror that of Christ. We should see as Christ was our pattern, we should see our lives matriculate and grow to the degree that we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus and we share in an inheritance. And I want to tell you, everything you need is found in God. When you position your heart to that fact and to that spiritual reality, you will begin to see the manifestation of breakthrough. You'll begin to see the manifestation of healings, miracles, signs, and wonders, and you'll begin to see your life take shape in a way that you could have never imagined. You'll begin to feel and receive the impartations of God's plans for your life. The scripture tells us in, in uh, Proverbs to delight ourselves in the Lord. And he will give us the desires of our heart. So we want to be ones that delight in the Lord. Type in the comment, I am delighting in God. I'm sorry, that's Psalms chapter 37, four through five. I knew that was, uh, that didn't sound right coming out of my mouth. I'm like, Proverbs, no, that's Psalms. <laughs> that's Psalms chapter 37, delighting in thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. He shall download and activate the plans that are within the mind of God for you. He will download those plans and those plans will begin to be hidden gems inside your heart. They'll begin to be desires that God placed there before the foundations of the world. So we talked about that on um, Wednesday. So today I want to talk about purging our conscience from dead works. When we 
are led by the spirit. And when we become ones that journey with God's spirit and cooperate with God's spirit, we then begin to see our conscience purified of dead works. Father, I thank you for those that will watch this live those that will watch the replay, I pray, Father, that they are empowered to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to share this message. I thank you, Father, that the hearers will receive this message in the spirit in which you have given it. Holy Spirit, empower our words. Holy Spirit, amplify this message. Amplify my voice so your people can hear what the spirit of the Lord says. Give me what to say and how to say and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. We yield this time to you, Father, for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so how to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. So Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. So purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. My God, so purge your conscience from dead works. When we are ones that live in the spirit, there are two opposites. We can either live in the spirit or live in the flesh. Romans chapter eight breaks this down so eloquently. Romans chapter eight reveals the nature of what it looks like to live in the flesh and what it looks like to live in the spirit. When we live in the flesh, it produces sin and death. When we live in the spirit, it produces victory. It produces life. It produces the manifestation of God in your life. It produces light and life. It produces freedom. It produces breakthrough. When we learn how to partner with the person of the Holy Spirit, even Jesus himself, according to Hebrews chapter nine, he could not complete the finished work on the cross, void of the Holy Spirit. Anything that we do for God must be done through the Holy Spirit. Type in the comments. It is through God's Spirit. Oftentimes, we like to think that we can do things within our own merit. We can do things for God because we have the idea. We can do things for God out of our human intellect, our human training, our human empowering, our human education, our social status, our friend group, our influence, our culture, because it's at our fingertips, because man approves it. We can do for God because of the flesh. But we must understand when we are walking in the spirit, we cannot depend upon the flesh because the flesh is enmity against God. The flesh fights against God. The flesh is contrary against the spirit. So we have to understand that it is not in our religious affiliation that we can accomplish anything for God. The flesh depends on itself or great religious efforts to overcome sin. It is through Jesus Christ that we have the power over sin. Outside of Jesus, sin has the power over us. We look in Genesis when Cain was about to uh, slew Abel, when Cain was about to kill Abel. God began to admonish and correct and rebuke Cain. He began to warn him, hey, if you don't get control of your flesh, sin is crouching at your door and it wants to overwhelm you. It wants to overcome you. It wants to appeal to your fleshly nature. It wants to appeal to your emotions. The nature of sin wants to cause you to do something that is outside of the will of God. When we walk in the flesh, it is void of God's spirit. 
It is anything that we do for God has to be done with God's spirit. We talked about the works of the flesh. We talked about how it looks when we walk after the flesh, but in after the spirit, go back and watch Wednesday. So we cannot depend upon the flesh. We cannot do things for God out of religious acts. Anything just as Jesus did in Hebrews chapter nine, verse 14. How much more, listen here, how much more for us that even Jesus himself had to, through the Holy Spirit, the eternal spirit, offered himself without the spot with offered himself without spot to God. So even Jesus, he needed the Holy Spirit to finish the work for God. He needed the Holy Spirit to allow him to sacrifice himself. It is only through the Holy Spirit, God's power, which accomplishes the will of God. If God has called you to write a book, if God has called you to preach, if God has called you to be a mother, a father, raise up the next world leader, whatever God has placed on your life as an assignment, if God has called you to uh, raise a business, be a kingdom financier, you cannot accomplish that void of God's spirit. You have to totally depend on on God's spirit and be led and empowered and guided by the Holy Spirit. It is always, hear me, motivated by love and fueled by faith. I want you to type that in the comments because I wanna, want you to etch that in your mind. I want you to know that it is always motivated by love and fueled by faith. Our love for God want, should empower us or motivate us to do things for God. Our love for the brethren, our love for the divine life, our love for Jesus Christ and the respect that we have from his life, death, burial and resurrection and now his intercession. So it is always by faith. It is our faith faith in Jesus and what Jesus has done, that we dwell in the divine life. But in the divine life, you cannot experience the divine life of the Holy Spirit, void of his spirit. You cannot have divine fellowship with the saints, void of his spirit. You cannot have divine partnership, divine downloads, divine experiences. Listen, every day for a Christ follower and a spirit-filled person is supernatural. Type that in the comments. Every day is supernatural. I should have a supernatural experience. I should have a supernatural download. I should have supernatural insight. Why? Because the just shall live by faith. And every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, if the spirit of Christ is in us, we belong to him. And if the spirit of Christ is in us, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. Here it is to achieve the will of God in and through our lives. Now, what is the will of God concerning you? This is why we have to have fellowship, partnership, cooperation with the Holy Spirit so that we are not a vessel that bucks against the spirit, that hinders the spirit, that grieves the spirit, that puts out the spirit, that does not allow the spirit of God to flow and work through our lives, to speak through us, to use us, to empower us, to guide us, to give us directives, give us instruction, give us our course and our our path. So when we become spirit led, we start to see the manifestation of the spirit in our lives. When we are filled up in every capacity with the Holy Spirit, 
Every place in your heart belongs to him. Every cavity of your being belongs to him. Every fiber of your being is yielded to God. Your finances is yielded. Your mind is yielded. Your time is yielded. Your talent is yielded. Your experiences are yielded. Your emotions are yielded. Your will is yielded. God is not looking for perfect vessels. He's only looking for yielded vessels, vessels that are pliable, vessels that will cooperate, vessels that will yield, vessels that will understand that we need to purge ourselves of dead works. Type in the comments, I'm getting rid of dead works. So when we walk in the spirit, hear me, we have an understanding that my partnership with the Holy Spirit fulfills the will of God in my life. I can only do for God through the Holy Spirit. Let me let me point out, oftentimes our natural giftings, our natural talents, our natural abilities are not really what the Lord is going to use. If you naturally have these gifts and talents, sometimes those things are hidden and God will have, will allow us to have to get in a place of partnership with the Holy Spirit to reveal the gift, the talent, the ability that the Holy Spirit wants to hone in on and blow upon so that you can be empowered to walk out this life. It's not always being the most gifted. It's not always being the most skilled. It's not always being the best at anything. It is being yielded to the spirit and is a supernatural encounter. Type in the comments, get in the spirit. Type in the comments and encourage those that are watching now and those that will watch the replay. Get in the spirit. Once we get in the spirit, we'll see breakthrough. Once we get in the spirit, we'll see our money change. Once we get in the spirit, we'll learn that thing that God wants to use to empower us to get wealth. We get wealth because God empowers us to get wealth. How does he empower us? He reveals in the earth the thing that he has placed in you that he wants to blow upon. What has God placed in you that he wants to blow upon and bless it? What does he want to multiply? What gift, what talent is hidden within your earthen vessel that God says, if she ever uncovers this talent, if she ever learns how to partner with me, if he ever learns how to yield to me, I'm going to blow upon that and I'm going to cause her to gain wealth in the earth. But we can only receive this through the partnership with the Holy Spirit. So we have to learn how to purge our conscience of dead works. How much more? So when we offer ourselves up to the Holy Spirit, when we learn how to partner with him, when the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, which is the fruit of the Spirit, is evident in our lives, we'll begin to be filled with the spirit. We talked about that Wednesday, what it looks like to be filled with the spirit and how that manifests in our lives. If you were not on Wednesday, go back and watch that live, what it looks like to be filled with the spirit. So when we purge our conscience of dead works, what does this mean? Purging our conscience of dead works. When we have Jesus Christ, we are not under guilt and condemnation. We are not in shame. We are not under the results of sin. We are in Christ Jesus. But listen, you have to really be in him. You can't name the name of Christ and live separate of his help, of his partnership, of his character, of his nature. When you live in Christ, we should see a manifestation of his life. We should see a manifestation of change. We shall see you. We should see a conversion to convert, to look different, to be something that you were not before. We should see a conversion. Type in the comments, I am converted. You should be one who has repented, which means change your mind about God, change your mind about your state in life, your spiritual 
um, home, who, how do you want to live this life? The acceptance of Jesus Christ, but you are also converted. Repent and be converted. Some people repent, but they are not converted. They are not changed. They are not different. They don't allow the work of the spirit. They don't allow the spirit to change them on a metabolic level. They are deceived in their thinking and the enemy is able to beguile them and tell them it doesn't take all that to tell them that you can still do this and still be saved. Your flesh can still have control. Your emotions can still have control. You can still hate people. You can still be dishonest. You can still be unloving and still no. you are changed. You are converted on a metabolic level. The Holy Spirit works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When you are not yielded to the Holy Spirit, you are not in cooperation and in partnership with him. Type in the comments, I must learn to partner. You are in fellowship and cooperation, walking and yielding and being guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. So when we purge our conscience of dead works, what this means is we are separated when we learn to yield to the Holy Spirit and do everything through him, everything. Listen, the mark of maturity is to realize that there is no good thing in this earthen vessel, void of God's spirit, void of God's presence. So I need to learn how to partner with him so that I can work this thing out so that I can live this thing to please the Lord. So when we purge our conscience of dead works, we are able to serve the living God. When we separate ourselves from the carnal nature when we separate ourselves from thinking that we can do anything void of Christ, void of God's spirit, it is through Christ because he is the bridge that reconciles us and brings us back to God. He is the mediator and it is through Christ, but it is achieved by the spirit. Type in the comments, Holy Spirit, work the works through me. So it is achieved by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power behind the Trinity. He is the power that achieves the will of God in and through your life. So when we have dead works, here it is. We are separated from God. Our works are cut off from God's presence. Our works are cut off, our deeds, our actions, the business, the ministry, the uh, partnership, it's cut off. You're doing it in your own strength. You're doing it in cultural trends. You're doing it in your ability. You're doing it without the leading and the guiding and the invitation of the spirit. Remember this, God is the initiator. Type in the comments. Come on. God is the initiator. He is the one that will initiate the work. He is the one that will tell you of what's to come. You don't tell him. He tells you. One thing that humans have to get in their mind is not your wisdom. You have to live and do this thing by faith. What does that look like? What does that look like? If you're wondering what does faith look like, type in the comments. What does faith look like? When we are doing it by faith, we are doing it by, here it is, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He is leading us. He is guiding us. He is inviting us into more. He is inviting us into ministry. He is inviting us into his presence. He is inviting us into prayer. He is inviting us to his throne. He is, it's an invitation. Listen, Christ died for you first. God loved you first. He is the first one to do it. We don't do it first. When God gives you an idea, it's going to come to you by way of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what is being said in the mind of God. And when Holy Spirit does this, it is up to you to learn how to yield your members, how to wait upon him, how to have patience to partnership and cooperate with him and yield your fully to his guidance. Man shall not live by bread alone. Here it is. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is my faith? My faith is the substance of things hoped for. What am I hoping for? God's word to manifest. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers you and gives you the desires to do things for God. When you cry because your promise isn't coming, it is Holy Spirit that is travailing through you. That desire that you have to see your children saved, to see your husband saved, it is the Holy Spirit that is through you using your vessel to cry and weep over the condition of your family, to cry and weep over the condition of your finances. But what you have to do is learn how to partner with him to birth it all the way through. Type in the comments, I need to see the fullness. First, when we partner with God, we must yield our mind. We must yield our emotions. We must yield our will unto God so that our works are not dead. Our works are not cut off from God. We are working with God. We are working with God. Type in the comments, I'm working with God now. I never forget. I think it was 2015, 2016. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, you work for me now. My God. I heard the Lord say, you work for me now. And what we want to do is become those that are a part of God's great vision. And we want to be those that fulfill our assignment on earth. And we cannot do that except we learn how to work with the Holy Spirit, except we learn how to yield our members onto him and offer ourselves up through partnership and cooperation. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers the vessel. It's a feeling that is, you can't, it's a passion down inside you. It's a drive down inside you. It's a agony down inside of you to see the will of God birthed in and through your life. And it is by the power of God. It is by the yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. So nothing we do for God can be done void of God's spirit. There are, there are a whole lot of things that we can do in our human strength. When we look at the world and the systems of the world, when we yield to God, God will begin to give us strategies. He'll begin to give us insight that we never understood, that we never learned, that we never went to school for. Everything that consists of man's wisdom, strategies, influences, man's religion, religious acts, um, all of that can be done void of God's spirit. So when we walk in the spirit, we carry that full dependence on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in, uh, provides the resources. The Holy Spirit provides the knowledge. The Holy Spirit provides the uh, um, uh, understanding. The Holy Spirit provides everything that you need to accomplish God's will. The Holy Spirit provides the manpower. The Holy Spirit provides the building. The Holy Spirit provides the resources. What we have to do is learn how to manage and steward. Type in the comments, help me in stewardship. Walking after the spirit, it's also a posture of stewardship. When he brings the resources, can you yield your desires to steward those things? Can you yield your desires to submit and obey everything that he says? So when we're walking after the spirit and not after the flesh, we begin to see ourselves walking in faith. We begin to hear the word of the Lord. We begin to wait upon the Lord for the next instructions. We begin to move by God's invitation. We begin to move as God tells us. We begin to see and have divine strategy, divine blueprints, divine insight to see the fullness of breakthrough. There are many in the earth that are contending for breakthrough. Many are contending for the hearts of their children. Many are contending for prodigals to come home. Many are contending for resources that promises that have been dead, things that have been uh, uh, held up in the heavenly realm. 
Th people have been contending for healing, for breakthrough. So many have died in faith, believing God for the manifestation. But I believe that the Lord is positioning his sons and daughters in the earth to contend for the breakthrough, to contend for revival. God is setting people ablaze. He's setting families ablaze. He's setting individuals ablaze. Listen, all it takes is one person to change a family. It takes one family to change a city. It takes one city to change a nation. What God wants to do is bring forth revival throughout the land. But revival has to first begin in individual hearts. When revival hits one heart, that one heart will affect five hearts. And that five hearts will affect 25 hearts because God is a multiplier. Type in the comments, let revival come. But what he needs is just one person in the family that will yield themselves. One person that will get in a birthing position. One person that will say yes, even if it costs me my name, even if it costs me my reputation, even if it costs me shame, even if it costs me, I'll yield, I'll posture myself in prayer just like Elijah had to go on top of Mount Carmel and the Lord told him rain is coming and he began to posture himself, himself in prayer for the manifestation of what God wanted. If God is telling you, I want to save your children. If God is telling you, I want to save your husband. If God is telling you, I want to bring revival. You better partner with the Holy Spirit and posture yourself in prayer to see the fullness of that breakthrough, to see the fullness of what God wants to do. Let me tell you, Elijah began to pray and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed until he saw signs of the breakthrough. Listen, he didn't see the fullness of what he wanted, but his faith saw the sign. He says, I see when he was praying, he postured himself and he told his servant, go look for rain. He said, look, I'm going to pray and you watch for the breakthrough. Who's watching while you pray? Who's watching for the manifestation of what you're praying for? Who's watching for your husband to change? Who's watching for your finances to change? Who's watching for your healing to come? Well, look, yesterday this happened, but today this happened. So I'm seeing signs of breakthrough. So Elijah began to pray. He began to pray. He began to intercede. He began to petition heaven. And he said, and look, go look for the rain. Seven times he sent his servant and he six times he sent his servant to watch for the rain. But the rain didn't come. So he prayed even the more. So the seventh time he sent his servant to look for the rain, his servant said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. He did not see the thing that he was praying for, but what he saw by faith was a manifestation that it was on the way. Because if you know anything about weather and you know that before the rain comes, the cloud comes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, before the rain comes, the cloud comes. So he did not see the fullness, but he knew enough to say, okay, I see a breaking. I see a change. I see a shifting. I see a cooperation. I see the manifestation. All I, do, all I need is to see a possibility. All I need to see is my finance shifting. All I need to see is a check in the mail. All I need to see is today we're not, me and my husband aren't partnering and tomorrow we were able to partner. I need to see a cloud the size of a man's hand. So listen, let me tell you something. When you're praying for something, let, let's look at this reality. Let's look at this reality. Elijah is on the top of a mountain and he's praying for the manifestation of rain, which would affect the whole area. But when he sent the servant the seventh time to look for the manifest, type in the comments, I'm looking for the manifestation. When you partner with the Holy Spirit, you'll start to see the work of the Spirit. You'll start to see the Holy Spirit change hearts. You'll start to see the Holy Spirit talking to your husband, talking to your children, talking to the banker, talking to the loan officer. You'll start to see the work of the Spirit. This is what Elijah saw. 
He saw the work of God's spirit. He saw the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting the thing in which he was birthing in the earth. He saw God's will coming to pass. He saw God's will manifesting. He saw the will of God in real time. So let's look at this scene. When we are looking for clouds, when we are looking for rain, this is what the servant said. I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Now I'm a woman, but my hand is just a little bit smaller than a man's hand. But he said this, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. I don't know about you, but when I look into the sky, a cloud the size of a man's hand looks pretty small. <laughs> my God, Jesus. Type in the comments, it's a small thing. <laughs> I just need to see a small thing, God. I just need to see cooperation today, God. I just need to see him going to church today, God. I just need to see him reading his Bible today, God. I just need to see him declare your name today, God. It's a small thing that you need to look for. It doesn't take a big thing for us to believe God. We should believe God even, and this is what Elijah did at the small thing he started moving in faith. No, oh, Jesus. Just at the word, just at the mention of something is on the horizon. I see the manifestation of what you're praying for. I see those children coming into salvation. I see your finances changing. Just a small thing. I just need to see you do something, God, for my faith to be secure. I just need to see the manifestation of this thing that I'm birthing. Uh, 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 when, when, when women are birthing a baby into the earth, one of the things that the doctor is looking for is the head. <laughs> The doctor is looking for the head to come. And when that head is peeking through, when that head is coming forth, one of the things they say is they say, I see the head. When you get the head out, you can get the rest out. When you get the head out, you can get the rest out. The head is the first thing to come. That cloud is the first thing to come before the rain. So if you're looking for the full manifestation, start looking for the small thing. The enemy will try to distract us. The enemy will try to bombard us with discouragement. The enemy will try to bombard us with doubt and worry and fear, anxiety, stress. The enemy will try to accuse God, but you have patience for God to do a full work. You want the full ear of corn. You want that thing to happen. You want that. So Elijah got up and Elijah, as he was partnering and laboring with the Holy Spirit to birth this rain through, to bring this fullness because God told him it was so, because God told him it was going to happen. So here it is. Elijah previously has shut the heavens up. He has shut the heavens up so that it would not rain. This is the authority that Elijah had with God. And God said, look, I'm going to send rain. I'm going to judge Ahab. I'm going to deal with this thing. I'm going to deal with this thing that's been killing your marriage. I'm going to deal with this thing that's been killing your finances. I'm going to deal with this thing that's been destroying you. And Elijah got up, type in the comments. I'm getting up now. I know you've been discouraged. I know you've been upset. Who am I preaching to? I know you've been crying. The Holy Ghost has heard your tears. He has seen your wet pillow. He has seen your intercession. He has seen your agony. But the Lord said, just look for the small thing. Look for the small thing that I'm, I'm doing. I want to encourage you today. I want to edify you today. Don't stop now. You get up from there and you begin to run and work for God. So Elisha got up and he said, now I want you to go unto Ahab. And he began to run. He said, I'm about to deal with this thing. So Ahab, uh, Elisha began to have the supernatural empowerment to run so that he outran Ahab's chariot. He outran a chariot. He outran horses. Come on, somebody. God 
God wants to empower you with supernatural ability that you outrun the thing that God is trying to deal with in your life. You outrun the divorce. You outrun the pain. You outrun the sickness. What does that mean? That means the thing that God places on the inside of me. I'll begin to run and excel. I'll begin to run and see the manifestation. I'll begin to run and see the fullness. I'll begin to run and see God's assignment fulfilled in my life. I'll begin to run and partner with the Holy Spirit that everything that I do is not dead. It's not void of God. It's not separated from God, but I will begin to walk in the faith of God. I'll begin to walk in the manifestation of God to see the fullness of my breakthrough. Type in the comments, I'm breaking all the way through. So Galatian chapter five says, stand fast. Type in the comments, stand fast. I'm standing fast. I'm standing steady. I'm standing on a solid foundation. I'm standing secure. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty, when you walk in the spirit, hear me. There are liberties. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you are free. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you're not under condemnation. The enemy wants, doesn't want you to know that you are no longer yoked to sin. You are no, no longer yoked to the law of sin and death, but you are in Christ Jesus. You live in the law of life and liberty in Christ. So you're not entangled with yokes of bondage. You don't have to go back to living life on a religious level. You can have deep relationship and intimacy with God through the Holy Spirit and Christ Jesus. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you are circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So if you start doing religious acts to try to, well, I'm going to fast. Now, did the Holy Ghost tell you to fast? Listen, we can't decide ourselves. We have to learn to be guided by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to fast for this. I'm going to do this for this. I'm going, I'm going. Instead of the Holy Spirit told me to, the Holy Spirit is leading me to. We can't do anything in our own strength. You can't do religious acts. You can't go to church expecting a breakthrough. You don't give your money expecting God. Well, I'm going to give my money so that I can get the money that I need. No, God is not an investment banker. <laughs> it is by faith that we give. It is by the moving, empowerment, empowering of the Holy Spirit that we give unto God. If this is blessing you, consider sowing some stars. Consider sowing a seed to cash app, dollar sign. For purpose. Coach, if God is leading you, if the Holy Spirit is prompting you, we are doing everything as the Holy Spirit um, inspires our heart and leads us. He prompts us to do it. Okay, so for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law when you are guided by religious acts. He, Paul is saying, listen, Galatians, don't go back to the law and the works and trying to do this thing in your own strength. It is through the grace. It is through the Holy Spirit. It is through the spirit of God that you were saved. It is the grace of God that is empowering you. It is the gift of God that is given unto you. It's all by faith. He says, keep in step with guiding, with guiding by the Holy Spirit. Listen, when the Holy Ghost comes in your life, remember I said you are converted. We look at the life of Peter. Before Peter received the Holy Ghost, when it was time for Peter to own Jesus Christ, when Jesus was offered up, they had took him and put him in jail. Peter denied Jesus because he was in fear, because he was in a, a turmoil. He was, you hear me? All right. Okay. I just got a signal and, and it was, 
messing up. <laughs> so it was by the Holy Spirit that Peter began to move in God, that Peter began to preach boldly and proclaim the name of God. Peter began to preach to the degree that souls were added to the kingdom. After the Holy Spirit came upon them, empowered them, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Some of you need revival in your homes. You need revival to take place. It is through the revival that God is going to allow the fire of God to ignite you. Listen, you need the Holy Spirit. Wait upon the Spirit. Ask for the Spirit. Learn how to partner with the spirit. Ask God to reveal the spirit unto you. Listen, everything will be exposed by the spirit. It is the spirit of God that wakes us up. It is the spirit of God that brings life into our lives. It's the spirit of God that changes the heart. It is the spirit of God that we receive everything we need from God. It is achieved by the Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit for every believer is made possible through Jesus Christ. His life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. When you are full of the Spirit, you and, and I'm getting ready to end this. You'll begin to see the sevenfold spirit of God manifesting your life. We talked about this Wednesday as well. So you want to go back and watch that live. I hope you share this to your timeline and your networks because this is blessing me. You'll begin to see the sevenfold spirit of God. Type that in the comments. I need God's spirit. The sevenfold spirit of God is spirit of wisdom. You need wisdom and prudence in your life. You need God's wisdom to navigate. You need God's instruction. You need God to help you uh, appropriate and applicate everything that he has given you. You need God's wisdom. God's wisdom, the knowledge, the spirit of knowledge. What does that mean? There are. There's a spirit of knowledge that will give you knowledge and understanding of things that you were never taught in the earth. You'll begin to have divine insight, divine knowing of things. You'll know things. You'll know things by the spirit. You'll know things supernaturally. And you won't even be able to explain why you know them. You just know them. These things are just in your knowing. They're in your mind. The spirit of strength, the spirit of might is the spirit of strength. You need God's spirit because he empowers you with strength. Just like Elijah was able to outrun that chariot. It was God's spirit upon him that empowered him with the strength to outrun horses. You need God's spirit. I need God's spirit. I need the sevenfold spirit of God. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, the fear of the Lord. There are so many things that are manifesting in the earth. And a lot of people are void of the fear of the Lord. This is why we see the, the corruptness and the perverseness in our pulpits, because there's no reverence and fear and respect and awe of God. This is what the Holy Spirit provides for us. And when we are vessels who yield to the Holy Spirit, we'll begin to see the fullness, the fullness, the spirit of counsel. You'll be able to have the counsel of the Lord, the understanding of God, the words to say. You'll have the answers. You'll have the counsel. God will be able to give you the answers. He'll be able, be able to give you the answers for you and for others. Just like we see on the life of Joseph, the spirit of wisdom and counsel rested on him in that he was able to interpret the dream. He was able to interpret the king, the Pharaoh's dream. And because of that, he was promoted. The gifts of God promoted him into prominence for the glory of God. 
and the fullness of the manifestation of what God wanted to do in and through his life was made viable, made alive through the Holy Spirit. If Jesus himself had to partner with the Holy Spirit to fulfill the will of God, and he was spotless, he didn't have sin in him. He said, the tempter has come and he has found nothing in me that belongs to him. There is no sin in me. Sin belongs to Satan. Sin is a byproduct of Satan. Satan beguiled Eve, thereby allowing sin to enter them. So Jesus, who was spotless, Jesus, who didn't have sin in him, he also had to, the Holy Spirit had to help him. We see in the Garden of Gethsemane, his flesh was like, oh boy. This, this reality is hitting me. Is there some other way we can do this thing? Because this is about to hurt real bad. But it was through the Holy Spirit that he was able to yield himself. God's will doesn't always feel good, but it yields good. It doesn't feel good to the flesh. Because guess what? You must crucify the flesh. Type in the comments. I'm yielding to God. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. We thank you that we are learning how to yield to your spirit. We are submitting ourselves to the spirit of God. We won't continue in dead works, works that don't profit, works that are cut off from you, works that don't produce fruitfulness. Listen, I can be alongside the greatest CEO in the world's system. He and I can do the very same thing, but I was never taught it. I'd never learned it. I never went to school for it. All I did was yield to the spirit of God and God can raise me up in the same position in the same way he does that CEO that went to school for business that has all the earthly connections. Listen, even in the church, we can... We can try to copy patterns. We can try to make systems work for us. But without the spirit of God is dead works. Without yielding to the Holy Spirit, we can try to do things in our own strength, our own intellect. God can give you one strategy that changes your whole life. God can give you one idea that shifts your whole life. That's what happened to Joseph. He had one interpretation for a dream that placed him in his destiny. One thing, one, one act of obedience, one idea, one strategy, one blueprint. Follow, yielded to the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, can shift your entire life. One act of kindness. Joseph when he prayed for his friends, when the Holy Spirit led Joseph to pray for his friends, the Bible says, and God turned the captivity of Job. Everything that Job was experienced was turned around and people came from miles around. Every neighbor came giving unto Job to the degree that he had double for his trouble. Type in the comments, I just need one act. I need one idea. I need one experience. I need one encounter. I need one word. God, give me the word for my husband. God, give me the word for my children. Give me the word for my finances. Give me the word, just one word, God. One thing, God, that changes everything. But listen, it's not gonna come void of God's spirit. It's not going to come with religious acts. Me going to church thinking just because I go to church, things are going to change. No, it's daily yielding myself. It's daily spending time with go back and listen to Wednesday. We talked about what it looks like to walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit is a manifestation of how we order our lives, how we live out our lives. When we walk in the spirit is literally how we live out our lives, how we Handle our daily encounters, our daily experience. How is your life ordered? Do you get up and pray? Do you get up and seek God and ask the Lord, Lord, this day, 
provide everything I need. Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead me and guide me. Holy Spirit, I invite your presence. God, give me what I need to do for this day. Give me any insight, any strategy to help me be a vessel for you, to help me to do your will in the earth, to partner with the Holy Spirit, to maximize my time. You just need that one thing. What is that one thing that God wants to use to empower you to get well? It can't come void of Holy Spirit. It can't come void of an, a relationship. Relationships grow over time. Have patience with yourself. Have patience with God. Have patience with yourself. Have patience with God to see the fullness of what God has intended for your life. He knows the thoughts. He knows the plans. He knows the desires that he placed in you before time began. Allow him to awaken those as you posture yourself and yield to the spirit of God. When you have a desire to pray, that's the Holy Spirit. When you have a desire to go to assemble yourself with the believers, that's the Holy Spirit. When you have a desire to worship God, that's the Holy Spirit. When you have a desire to get on here and listen to 55 minutes of me talking about how to walk in the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. When your heart is pricked, that's the Holy Spirit. When you say, I want to do that. I want to be that. I want to have that experience. That's the Holy Spirit. There is no good thing in this flesh. It is the Holy Spirit. We can't desire God void of God. We can't do for God without God. We can't want God without God. We can't have faith without God giving us faith. For every To every man is given a measure of faith. He gives us faith to give back to him. Nothing that we do can be void of his spirit. But guess what? Because we're so used to living in the flesh, because we're so used to living and doing things in the way of the world, sometimes we get out of the spirit and do things in the flesh. And God wants us to do them cognizant of our partnership with him, being aware of who is doing this work, being aware of who is speaking, being aware of who is empowering, like me being on here. It's the Holy Spirit that's empowering me. It's the Holy Spirit that's giving me the words. He's giving me what to say. He's told me what he wants to share. It is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you how to respond in a heated conversation or heated fellowship. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit that helps you restrain your emotions when somebody is cussing you out and your words are, I still love you. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that you don't retaliate and get revenge because the flesh wants to do that. The flesh wants to retaliate and get revenge, but it's the Holy Spirit that causes you to walk away. So when we don't know how to partner with the Holy Spirit, we don't see the fullness of God's will in our lives. It is our partnership in being a vessel that is fully yielded to the Holy Spirit. I pray this has blessed you guys. I pray that this message is empowered you. Um, I pray that you are edified. I feel like there are some wives on here that the Lord has heard your cries for your husband. And the Lord wants you to begin to truly partner with him. I don't see everybody's comments because if you don't give, but I really feel like charisma, like the Lord is really tugging on your spirit. He, uh, he, he, is, he keeps highlighting your name. I don't know if she's still on here, but I see that the Lord wants to begin to shift some things, but it's going to take you really partnering. I feel like this word was really... Um, it's, it was for a lot of people, but I feel like this word really ignited something on the inside of you. And the Lord wants you to begin to partner with the Holy Spirit. 
I, I, I just really like your like tears. I see tears and I see you crying. I see you frustrated. But the Lord is saying that it's going to be done by his spirit. And he says he needs you to have patience to see it all the way through. He says, by my spirit, I do the work. It is not by might nor by power, but by, by the spirit of God. So he wants you to begin to yield to the spirit of God. He wants, he says, I'm the one that will settle disputes. I'm the one that will bring peace. I'm the one that will bring understanding. He's saying, as you yield to me, as you partner to me, he said, yield all of your decisions to him, yield all of your actions to him, begin to ask him to lead you, to guide you, to show you the way. He says, I don't want you to get in your flesh, in your emotions and do things out of an emotional state. He says, I want you to do them guided by my spirit. He says, let me lead you and guide you into all truth. Type that in the comments. I'm guided now. And, and um, I want to pray for Christine. I don't know who you are, but I want to pray for um, empowerment. I want to pray healing upon you that your body will be healed even now in Jesus name. I pray healing upon your legs, healing in your stomach area from any um, uh, stomach allergies and digestion issues and um, uh, what is it? Bowel issues. I pray for you now, Christine, that the will of God will be done in your life. I pray healing upon you in Jesus name. I pray healing to your mind. I pray healing to your emotions. I pray peace upon you that the Lord God will give you peace on every side, that there will be peace at your borders in Jesus name. I pray that for you, Christine, in the name of Jesus. Guys, be strengthened in God. Be strengthened in who he has called you to be. Be strengthened in his spirit. Let his spirit lead you and guide you. Let his spirit begin to direct you. Let his spirit begin to empower you, infuse you. Listen, when you sit on here one hour and one minute, God's spirit has captivated you. You got to understand the working of the spirit. When you desire more in God, that is God's spirit saying, I'm not satisfied at this level. You need more for me to do what I need to do. The Holy Spirit is saying, get more. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness, the Bible says, shall be filled. What are you being filled with? The Holy Spirit. You're being filled filled with the spirit of God. Because when you're filled with the spirit of God, you are satisfied. If you are in a place of dissatisfaction, type in the comments, I've been dissatisfied. Listen, if you are in a place of being dissatisfied, it is because the Holy Spirit is telling you there's more. Listen, hear me. Who's on here? You like, I'm just not satisfied where I'm at. I'm not satisfied with this job. I'm not satisfied. There's more, you, you're hungering and thirsting for God. You're hungering and thirsting for more. You're hungering, thirsting for his presence. You're hungering. See, sometimes people get in these postures and they look to fleshly things. They look to get out of situations. They look to um, do things in their own strength. They try to figure it out themselves, but it is a dissatisfaction in your spirit. Because you are hungering and thirsting after God. Only he satisfies. You will try to get out of a relationship, leave a job, do this, do that. But it's only in God's divine will. Hear me that you are satisfied when you are frustrated. It means a, when you are frustrated in a job, when you are frustrated in an environment because God wants to get more out of you. You're not fully expressing who you are. You're not fully expressing the will of God. You're outside of his will. We experience dissatisfaction, Christine, when we're not in full alignment with God. And a lot of people take this as, well, I'm experiencing dissatisfaction, so it must be out there. It must be this. It must be that. It must be my job. It must be this. It must be that. No, it is from within. Type in the comments, look within your name. Look within, Christine. Look within, Kimberly. Look within, Carla. Look within, Charisma. 
What's in here that is not being fulfilled? What is not being filled up? What is holy? Listen, you are a spirit being. You are a spirit being. Everything that you need is in you. When that dissatisfaction is there, it's because you're outside of alignment somewhere. You're not fulfilling the full potential within. You're not connected to the source, the right people. You, you don't have relationships that feed you. You're in relationships that are not feeding you. They're draining you rather than feeding you, filling you up. You don't have the right people pouring in. You're not at the uh, the church that you're at. You may have maximized your growth at that church and need to move to the next place. We have to start looking within instead of looking external because when we have the Holy Spirit within, when we are in right alignment with God, let me tell you this, there is full satisfaction. When you start aligning with the Holy Spirit, I'm giving y'all like a master class. Uh, when you start to align with the Holy Spirit, you'll start to experience full satisfaction. When you are in the right place, in the right space, you'll start to experience a peace. It doesn't matter what people are doing outside of you or around you. You'll start to experience the peace of God because you are with God. Your spirit is filled and your uh, spirit is uh, receiving the full resources that you need to sustain you. In his presence is fullness of joy. When am I in his presence? When I'm with the Holy Spirit. Uh, in God, I have everything I need pertaining to life and godliness. So if in God, in Christ, I have everything I need, then I need to remain in Christ and partnering with the Spirit of God. Here it is. God is waiting on some of you to mature before he releases the promises, before he releases the resources, before he releases. You have to journey and be a built up. Your mind has to change. Your heart has to change. Your spirit, your will, your emotions have to learn how to yield to the spirit so that you can do what the spirit says do and not your flesh. When you are guided by the flesh, you do what the flesh tells you to do. You get angry, you get, uh, well, not angry because that's a human emotion and we can be angry and not sin. You get in your emotions and your emotions cause you to sin. You get, um, you start doing things void of God's spirit when you're walking in the flesh. But when you're walking in the spirit, everything you do is guided by the spirit. You do what the spirit tells you to do. If the spirit tells you to be quiet, you're quiet. <laughs> if the spirit tells you, no, 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 don't say anything. If the spirit says, say, I forgive you, you're yielding. If the spirit says, so a thousand dollars, you're yielding, even if it hurts. Why? Because you're walking in the spirit and it's, remember, motivated by love and fueled by faith. I love God, so I want to do what he wants me to do. And I'm stepping out on every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Every I, I, I'm, I'm moving on his uh, inspiration upon my heart and his words that come out of my out of his mouth. He inspired my heart and his words came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. You, we will hear this in scripture. And the word of the Lord came and the word of the Lord came to me. God's word told me to do this. God's word said, so this God's word said, support this God's word. God inspired me. Remember Holy spirit inspires us. There's an inspiration that comes on you. There's an inspiration that comes on you inspired to do something for God, inspired to help God, inspired to do the will of God. That's the Holy spirit. Type in the comments, Holy spirit, have your way. Listen, you may not have the resources to do what Holy Spirit tells you to do. That's why it's fueled by faith, motivated by love. You step out. You step out in faith and the resources come. When God asked me to write my first book, Christine, I didn't have the resources. I was like, God, I need money to write a book. I don't have an audience. Lord, 
why, how am I going, I don't know how to do that. But what did I have to do, Charisma? I didn't know how to do that in my own strength. But I had to learn this partnership. I had to learn that everything that I'm going to do for God is fueled not by what Sherry can do. It's not by what you can do, Tamika. It's not by how you could talk to your children and change them. It's not how, by how you could talk to your husband and change him. It's by you being motivated by love to endure, praying that individual through that God would open their eyes, that the Lord would win back the territory of their hearts. What does that mean? Sin is taken out of their hearts. And God gives them a heart of flesh. He said, I'll take away the stony heart, the hard heart, and give you a heart of flesh, softness to be pliable to God's spirit. When we partner, we don't have to have all the ingredients in the natural. And, and, and so when I, when I wrote the book, my sister was encouraging me. She was like, just write it. And I'm like, but I'm looking at all these ex external things, y'all. Stop looking at the external. That's what the devil wants you to focus on. He wants you to focus on bad behavior. He wants you to focus on what the husband is doing, what the children are doing, how the bank account looks, the people at the job. Focus on what he said and what he is saying to do. If he's saying, keep showing love, then keep doing that. If he's saying, I want you to... Um, so a thousand dollar seed, do that. Whatever he's saying, do, do what he tells you to do. That's what I'm saying. Mary, when Jesus was at the wedding of Canaan, Cana, and they had ran out of wine and she knew Jesus could do something about that. Now, something that stood out to me is Jesus' siblings didn't readily support his ministry. But if they didn't even join, <laughs> they weren't even one of the disciples. You would have thought because his siblings grew up in the house with him that they would have been one of the disciples. And then Mary, she knew Jesus had capabilities because at the wedding, she was like, whatever he tells you to do, she went to him to solve a problem of wine. They ran out of wine, Jesus. And he's like, why are you telling me this? It, it ain't my time yet. I'm not supposed to be revealing myself. So what I saw there is there was a part of Jesus that Mary saw that the siblings didn't see. Uh, Jesus. Because had they had known really who he was, I'm sure they would have joined the efforts right off the bat. They would be like, we going with you, bro. We, we support you, bro. We, we, we down for you, bro. But the disciples didn't even come, become a disciple until after he died in the resurrection. Ah! So what am I saying to you? There's a part of you that your siblings may not even be able to accept. But Mary knew. Why did Mary know? Because Mary started it all. Uh, Mary knew how Jesus came. Mary knew what was said about Jesus. Uh, the siblings were too familiar with Jesus. The siblings looked at Jesus. Is Can there anything good come out of Nazareth? They didn't say that, but I, this is in my imagination. He's just my brother. <laughs> He's just the oldest. But was there a intimate relationship that Mary had with Jesus that she did not have with her other children? Yeah, because she had to make sure he got to his destiny. Everything was on the line. She had to teach him. She had to train him. She had to empower him. She had to equip him. See? People might not understand your journey. People might not have understand the things you have to go through. There are some things you may have to go through. There, there are some things that for the calling, but guess what? Go through them with the Holy Spirit respond the right way. Don't make detours. Don't make wrong moves. Don't make wrong decisions. Consult the spirit of God. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, 
If you're interested in any of my books, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. If this bless you, consider sowing a seed to dollar sign, the number four purpose coach. Consider sowing a seed to Zell at touchdownsenterprise at gmail.com as the spirit inspires you and guides you. Remember, everything that we do for God is fueled by faith. Whatever is not a faith is sin. So if God is not motivating you, if God didn't say, man, you know, I would love to be able to sit down. Look, I would love more coaching. I would love to be mentored and, and taught. I would love to uh, have some of this insight. Go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. If you can't do that, so stars so that what I'm doing for the kingdom, I told you, he told me to work for him. What am I, what I am doing for the kingdom can have finances to back it up and all the things that I do for God, you can also support those efforts by your seed. So I pray those that are watching live, I'm not sure. I can't see all the comments. If you have not given StreamYard permission, I can't see your comments. So you could be commenting and I can't see it. And when you're on the, the thread, I can see your name and uh, prophesy to you. If the Lord, if the Holy Spirit shall highlight you um, to speak to you. Um, so what we want to do is learn how to yield and birth things through all the way through. Don't stop at the head. You got to get the shoulders out. You got to get the torso out. Birth it all the way through. Don't die in the birthing process. Don't abort saying this is too painful. I ain't doing it no more. Bring it all the way forth. Listen, you want to be a destiny traveler who experiences the fullness of everything that is available to you. Don't be, be a destiny traveler that does not experience the fullness. Don't be a saint <laughs> that has dead works that don't produce victory. You want, if God, listen, this is what I'm learning. If you do something in the spirit, God tells you to do one thing, Christine, and that one thing may be write a book. That book will can take you in you, you may do only one thing, write one book, but that one book will go all over the world and sell millions of copies. Why? Because it was fueled by the spirit. You did it by faith. You did it obeying the Holy Spirit. He knows what that one book would accomplish and your yieldedness to him. God's not looking for you to be perfect. He's looking for you to be yielded. Your yieldedness will perfect your patience. It, it'll perfect you. It will burn off those things. It'll change. Holy Spirit changes you. He gives you the desires. He gives you what you need. Everything is found in him. If you're interested in group coaching, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise. Dot com. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, we, we do that. Following the leading of the Lord, following the dictates of the spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is empowering me to give you these words. It's the Holy Spirit that gives me the insight, the clarity, the knowledge. It's the Holy Spirit that brings up the scriptures. It's the Holy Spirit, guys. It's a supernatural experience. Remember, I told you every day in your life should be a supernatural experience. Every day, every day you should be walking in the spirit. Your life should be guided by the spirit. You should be living. God should be talking to you, telling you what to do. God should be talking to you, telling you about your children. Because you're supernatural and you live in the spirit. Now, will you know everything? Possibly, possibly not. But he will reveal it in time. He reveals the secret that is in a man's heart. He reveals the, even the secrets. He reveals secrets that your children will hide from you. He reveals secrets of men <laughs> to you. He will reveal it. He does that. So what am I saying? Learn how to walk in the spirit. Be patient with yourself. Learn how to yield to him. Learn how to spend time with him. 
Learn how to build up your ability to hear. Get with somebody that's stronger that can teach you so that your learning curve is cut. You know, like when somebody is trying to learn something on their own versus learning it from somebody who's already learned it. I don't have to spend wasted time with a whole lot of mistakes because that person has the knowledge because they already been through that. They already know that. So I can just get with that individual. That's why I coach. That's why I mentor for people that are learning these things, which I've already learned. I can help you. So that's what I'm called to do. I love you guys. If, if Does anybody have any questions? I, I can answer a couple of questions before we get off here. I'll give you guys a few minutes if you want to ask any questions in the comments. So that's how we yield to the spirit of God. And the spirit of God then brings life into our life. Victories. We start seeing victories. We start seeing battles won. We start seeing things change. We start seeing generational curses and patterns being broken off. Some of us are repeating patterns that our parents did. The th same thing that our parents went through, we are now walking in. The same decisions that our parents made, our mothers made, our fathers made, we're seeing those same things uh, transpire in our lives. But God wants to break those cycles and give you the victory and cause you to walk in newness. When? He wants you to walk in newness. What is that newness? Your new life that is hidden Christ. He wants you to walk in that and not after the cycles and generational patterns and choices and uh, curses and decisions. Remember in the book of Judges and we see um, just about in every chapter, the Bible says, and the children of the Lord did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them over. God delivers you over to what? God delivers you over to the enemy. <laughs> it's just the judgment. The judgment, God doesn't cause things to happen. It's just a law. It's a spiritual law and a spiritual truth. When you allow and open the door to the enemy, you give him that access. You make provisions for sin. You make provisions for the enemy to come into your life. Now, some things we have fell into because of iniquity, generational patterns and choices, things that weren't broken in generations previously. So those are the inclinations that we just naturally choose because it's in the flesh, because it's in our DNA to choose that. So we choose patterns, even if we didn't grow up with our parent, we still make the same choices. We see this in the life of the Israelites. We see <clears throat> the Israelites who were delivered out of Egypt die in the wilderness, but later on, we still see the pattern of idolatry. Those uh, Israelites that die in the wilderness that God had to destroy was because they erected an idol after, after they were supposed to be coming out of Egypt to serve the living God. They got into the wilderness and erected a golden calf. They used Aaron and allowed help Aaron help them build the calf. Aaron's too went astray. He still got judged too. So those people died off. Everybody that got delivered out of Egypt died. <laughs> I think it was under a certain age. They got, they died. But then later on in scripture, we see them continuing to fall, fall into the same idolatry. Why? Because there's an inclination and there's a natural uh, um, written code in our DNA to follow after what our parents, except it be broken by the power of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. And we yield ourselves to the spirit and the Holy Spirit teaches us, guides us, leads us into all truth that our actions are different. This is why you need the Holy Spirit, because without him, <clears throat> we're walking after the flesh. OK, so be strengthened, be empowered. I love you guys. Thank you, Destiny Travelers, all of those that are walking while en route to fulfill your destiny. I thank you for uh, joining live. I thank you for watching the replay. 
I pray that you are inspired. I pray that this message finds you well. I pray that the Lord would edify you and bring you into greater partnership with the Holy Spirit, that you would love him, that you would respect him, that you would fear him, and that you would walk in the fullness of who God has called you to be as you are motivated by love and fueled by faith. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.